Well, we're back here in the Buick section of my garage. You all know my 55, if you've been on the website, that's the heavily modified one. This is my 57 Buick Roadmaster right here. Uh, there's the ad for it right there. The proud choice of the man who carries success with ease. You recognize that guy driving? That's uh, me and my wife. I put ourselves in the ad. I always loved these ads from the 50s. The people were so tiny and the cars were so enormous. Like the cars weren't big enough already, they have to make the people extra tiny just to make the cars even more massive. But it has all these kind of goofy features. Safety news, only Buick has the safety minder. A device that's a great boon to your safety. There's a little thing on the dashboard. You'd set it to what speed, and when you hit that speed, it'd go ee, ee, like a buzzer would buzz, like to tell you to slow down. Yeah, huge boon to safety. But that's just one of those gimmicks. And uh, there's your motor right there, 364 cubic inch, 300 horsepower. It's really a fantastic car. The nice thing about this one is, this is a 100% original car. You know, restored cars are fun but they're only original once. Now this one doesn't look as nice as some of the other stuff in the garage. It's because I really haven't touched it. Uh, it's a California car. Uh, it's only been in one tiny accident right after it was bought. One of the fenders was dinged. Uh, I got it from a guy who got it from the original owner. The upholstery is 100% original. And you know, nothing drives like a nice original car. Everything is just sort of bedded in. I mean, I'll show you something funny on the other side here. Oh, it's right here. Here's where it is. The original owner of this car, every week he took it to the car wash and the brushes would come down and dry the car off. And after like 40 years of that, it just uh, took some of the paint off. It, it's too nice to restore. I just like to keep it original. Uh, take a look around. It's got your big fuel door where it says fuel. You just put massive amounts of what appears to be jet fuel, but it's really a high octane. I think this thing is 10 and a half to one compression. As you can see, it's the 50s. There's a lot of chrome. And it's got the Dynaflow transmission. You know, the Dynaflow got kind of a bad rap because people call it the slush matic and it certainly was true, but it doesn't get much smoother than this. You know, Buick kind of invented the term boulevard ride. You just kind of coast along, you know? And when you, when you put that Dynaflow down, it never really shifts. It just kind of, it feels like one of those modern CVT transmissions. It just kind of, mm, and you just keep accelerating. Big doors, a lot of chrome. That's a horn, people get out of the way. Little gimmicks like you hit the gas pedal to start it. You know what the grown-ups used to do to me when I was a kid? It's got a thing called the Wonder Bar radio. So you press the button there and it would signal so you can find your favorite station. And there's also a button on the floor. And when you press it, you see, it would also find the station. It looks like a dimmer switch. It's right next to the dimmer switch. And when I was a kid, that's what the grown-ups would do. You know, my uncles in, in their Cadillac, my uncle would always go, hey Jay, wave your hand over the car, and I'd go like that, oh, and I'd make it move, and I used to think the radio was moving when he was actually pressing the button, and it wasn't until I got my very own car, I realized, hey, wait a minute, my uncle Frank had been fooling me all this time. But, uh, hop in, we'll take it for a ride. I like the car! Hey, thanks! That guy said he liked my car. You know, American cars, especially cars from the 50s and 60s, get kind of a bad rap. Uh, you know, people called them dinosaurs and made fun of them, but you know, hey, dinosaurs ruled the world at one time. And you can see why. Uh, big panoramic windshield. You know, modern cars have the big A pillar here, you know, in case you roll over and the, the roof doesn't collapse on your head. But hey, if you can roll this thing over, <laughs> You're going way too fast. But you know, they're comfortable to ride in. You know, on a beautiful California night like this, driving your Buick Roadmaster, hitting that Dynaflow, 300 horsepower. You know, when I was a kid, a car like this didn't cost that much more than an MG. And you say to yourself, boy, why would you buy a silly sports car like a Porsche when you could get 300 horsepower, 5,000 pounds, a convertible and four seats for the same money? Well, of course, when I was a kid, I would have rather had the sports car. But you know something? 
There's something I really like about these big old dinosaurs. Especially a car like this, being an original, unrestored car, it drives just like it drove when it was new. Oh sure, there's a couple more scratches and eh, a couple of rattles, but you know, it's still pretty solid. It's like I say, if you take these old cars and you put them back the way they were originally, you don't try to hop them up, you don't do anything special to them, you put them back to factory specs, they're very dependable and they run forever. I've had this car about 16 years, 17 years. I've done nothing but change the oil, change the transmission fluid, electric windows work, top goes up and down. What you call Buick quality. You got your ribbon speedometer here. All kinds of goofy gimmicks. See these numbers changing? That's that safety minder I told you about. You uh, set it to the speed you want it to go and the buzzer will go off. Set it at 40, 35. See, this is supposed to be a safety feature in case your teenager is driving. Can you hear it going hee, hee. Oh my God, I'm going too fast. Oh my God. What a boon to safety that is. Who needs an airbag when you got that? Now, could this be anything but an American car? No one's gonna go, hey, is that an Audi? Hey, is, is that some kind of uh, you go or something? Nah. It's like driving a Wurlitzer jukebox. You know what I like about this car? It's like a comfortable pair of shoes. It's not the shiniest, and it'll look the best, but it just feels right. Everything is nicely broken in, exactly as it left the factory. It's only got 78,000 miles on it. You put your foot in it, it just goes. I don't think I'll ever restore this car. I'll fix it up, but I just want to keep it the way it is. My boon to safety. I'm going to go see what the sunset looks like on the top of Mulholland. See you next week.